Okay, so we introduce uh, mm, the dual space of uh, LP, do you remember? So we introduce LP E dual has the space of the linear and bounded functional that has which has domain in L P E, so R G E L P E with values in R. G linear and continuous and okay we introduce the norm so it's the supremum among all the among all the function f in LPE, which are not zero. And we prove some, uh, some results. So we we'll, we'll list some of them. OK, when the P is in between 1 and infinity, we show that that each function g in Q defines a bounded a linear and bounded uh, functional in P. which as uh, usual I will mean Q and P are related by the fact that uh, they are conjugate exponent and P uh, in this way you can define F of F has the integral over E of the product between between the two and moreover, we also prove that we can say something about the norm of big F. OK. So beside this, we prove also a lemma. So we are we consider E a measurable set with finite measure. And we assume that <coughs> that there is a constant M positive such that we have that the absolute values of f of the integral over e of f times g is less or equal than m times <coughs> the LP norm of f. And this uh, must be true for any f uh, bounded and measurable. Then we show that we can infer that G is an LQ. And also we can control the LQ norm of G by means of M. OK, so what remains to prove, and this would be the last theorem of the course, and then, then we, will, we will see some exercise, OK? preparation of the, of the test. Is the so-called Ritz representation theorem. So 
this is known under the name of Ritz representation theorem. Okay, which tells you the following. So you have let F be a bounded linear functional on LP. Then you can somehow represent this big F by means of a function G in LQ, okay? Then there is a unique function uh, that we will call G in LQ, where as usual, with P and Q are conjugate exponent. Okay. Such that F of F, we can represent big F in this way as the integral over E of F, which is the test function times this, uh, this function G. And we have also that There is a relation also between the norm of this big F and the norm of G. So the norm of F of capital F as, a, as functional is equal to the norm of G as element in LQ, okay? So for simplicity, I will prove this um, when E is uh, an interval uh, so in the case when E for instance is not an interval but it is bounded <coughs> you can uh, uh, think that E has a set contained in an interval E. If E is unbounded, you can split it into intervals, okay? But, okay, just keep in mind that the theorem holds for measurable set E, okay? So now we will see the proof under this hypothesis. Okay, so we consider <coughs> a sub-interval of E of the type, uh, for instance, I don't know, we can think at it as zero, one, just a fixed idea. So we, you consider a sub-interval zero S, where S is less or equal than one, and we denote with usual key of S, the characteristic function of this interval. Okay. So basically, we, we want to proceed by step, okay? We, we, we first, we try to test this capital F on this very elementary function Q of S, then we improve, we, we refine our, our argument, okay? <coughs> Let's define phi of s 
by definition, f uh, q of s. Okay. Okay, so phi is a function between 0, 1, and r. And now we claim that this phi is an AC. Okay, phi is Okay, as usual, when you want to prove that a function is an essay, you, you find a collection or a final collection of non-overlapping intervals. So, for instance, we can denote uh, this uh, finite collection in this way, take SI, SI prime, we use this notation with the prime usually, so be any finite collection of non-overlapping intervals which have length uh, of zero one, which has length less than delta. Okay. Okay, now we define a function f uh, by means of this uh, um, combining this notion and uh, and the intervals that we have just introduced, so we define f as the sum over E of the characteristic function of SI prime minus the characteristic function of key SI time the sine of phi phi SI prime minus phi SI. Okay, so we have that. Uh, So let's uh, compute f of f. Use this function f as test function. You have that f you use. We want to simplify this expression. So we have that this is by definition Okay, f is linear, so we can So basically what you you can just to do all the
this by definition is phi <coughs> So at the end, you end up with this. <coughs> OK, so we have that finally. OK, so now we recall our our choice of this finite collection on overlapping integral, and then we have that. The LP norm as to the P is less than delta. And so we have that. OK, we have that the sum. Less or equal is equal to f of f, which is less or equal than the norm of f as a function at times f of p, which is less than delta 1 over p times the norm of f. So basically, we have that the total variation of phi is less than this. So if you uh, if we take phi is in AC and uh, taking if you want this to be less than epsilon, taking delta equal to okay now that we know that phi is in AC we can use a previous theorem okay uh, okay so by a previous result Okay, we know that we can represent this phi in a special way. We know that there is an integrable function g. such that you have that in particular f of q of s which is precisely uh, phi of s can be expressed as the integral between 0 and s of gt and dt where g is, uh, is an integral function so, you, so here you can express this as find the characteristic function of entity. Okay, from this we can immediately somehow generalize this so, so we know that any step function is a linear combination of characteristic functions so we can extend this relation to uh, somehow more general functions so we know that every
Is that? Okay, the suitable linear combination. of the type ci key of si and so we have that f of psi is equal to the integral between 0 1 g psi this is for true for any uh, this is for any step function yeah. okay now we want to generalize a little bit more and take um, a bounded measurable function Okay, so let F be a bounded Okay, if you remember, we showed that we can maybe uh, when we dealt with the measure theory, we showed that we can approximate this kind of function with uh, with step function. Okay. Uh, so we saw that there is a sequence. that psi n converts to f almost everywhere in 0, 1. And then we can, OK, we can use uh, either the bounded convergence theorem or the Lebesgue convergence theorem, but it's the same. So we know that uh, since We have that Fn, no, sorry, F minus psi n P is uniformly bounded and uh, tends to zero almost everywhere in E, then we can apply uh, the bounded convergence theorem. Okay, and we can infer that they converge in LP, okay? And we have that F minus psi n tends to zero in, uh, in LP norm. Okay. Moreover, we can say more. We have that the function on f is bounded. Okay, so okay. 
we can estimate this difference okay if you want we can just to proceed by step just to so we use the linearity Then you use uh, the definition of uh, supremo. And we know that this goes to 0. Call it so call this star. And moreover, we also know <coughs> g times a constant c because the psi n are uniformly bounded by the same bound of f for f. Uh, then, OK. <coughs> So by the normality convergence theory, we have that f g is equal to the limit of psi n times g. You combine star and star, and we have that we finally have that. And this is true for any bounded measurable function f. <coughs> OK, so we need now to extend for any function f in p. Okay, we can also, uh, from this, we can also deduce uh, a bit more. We can deduce that uh, so since f of f is less or equal than then my previous result, the one that I stated at, at the beginning of the lesson, oh, we have that this plays the role of M if you want. We have that G is in the Q, and moreover, we can estimate the norm of G, the Q norm of G, by by the norm uh, of f. OK, so what it remains to show, so it remains show that f of f is equal to for any f in a b. Uh, OK, here we can. We have that f in LP. OK, 
can be approximated. Uh, so we have okay, B then the Rainy epsilon positive. There is uh, a bounded function in and P bounded measurable functions. Uh, okay, call it psi again such that. F and epsilon. P is less than epsilon. Okay, so we know that the relation is true for the, this particular psi because it is bounded. So we know that. F evaluated on psi is indeed equal to G psi. And now we want to estimate this difference F of F minus this. Okay, we want to prove that this is arbitrarily small. Okay, as usual, we split, we add and subtract of f, f of psi plus psi g minus f times g. This is less or equal than f, f minus psi plus. can bound this by the, the norm of f as functional minus f then sorry p okay this is by the other inequality for instance, we can collect here the same quantity. We have this is times epsilon. Finally, what we prove is that so epsilon is arbitrary, so we prove that indeed uh, f of f is equal to for any f in LP and the quality is follows from a previous lemma, okay, by the previous proposition. Okay, the fact that G is unique, you can do it by yourself. You will assume that there are two different and you will get a contradiction, okay?
Okay, <clears throat> I will show you Exercise, which was uh, the one, one of the, the one in the homeworks. Okay, so you had to prove that <coughs> you have a sequence f n which converts to a function f in measure. And you know that <coughs> there is an integrable function g such that you have any fn is bounded by by g and then you had to prove that they converge in l1 basically okay Okay, there, there were many ways, actually. So now I propose one, but uh, two of you, I can't remember your name, Sudelia and, um, and you, I don't remember your name, <laughs> proposed other approach, which were correct as well. Oh, okay. <coughs> yeah, so Elia and uh, Idrissa, they proposed other approach, with, which were correct. Okay, so somehow here <coughs> the idea were to uh, to split this domain E, which in principle can be could be uh, unbounded, in a bounded domain and in an and in a bounded part and in an unbounded part and to deal separately in those in those two parts. So you fix some epsilon. Okay, and we know that Fn minus F Somehow you cut, you use a cutoff within this interval here, and you see that this convert to a fan minus f almost everywhere as k tends to, to plus infinity. And then here at this point you can use a uh, the Lebesgue convergence theorem or the monotone convergence theorem, so by the, for instance, the monotone convergence theorem. Okay, here n is kept fixed, okay? Which is, what is moving is this k. So by definition of limit, we know that there exists some n such that outside this interval, we have that fn minus f was less than, for instance, uh, epsilon over 3 just to... Huh? Eh? This is n. No, no. Modulus x, you are... Where? N. 
N, okay, it's related with K. I call it N, but it's related with the, with the index K. Here, N is kept fixed. Okay, okay now, uh, okay, now we look at, at the complement of this domain, and we have that, we recall that by the absolute continuity of the integral, Okay, we have that for any delta. Uh, okay, for each, okay, for each, and given some epsilon positive that resists a delta, such that for any set which is small, any uh, set A, such that the measure of A is less than delta. have that this integral is small as well. Okay, we can put over 3 just because then we, we will uh, gather many terms together. Okay, so we call it this. Okay, so we may assume with no loss of generality that delta is less than epsilon over this number. And we have that well, that since fn converts to f in measure, There exists some n prime such that the measure of the set where fn minus f is larger or equal than delta is less than delta. And this is true for any n larger than delta. Okay, so we define as A, so the set which will play this role, as the set of Fn, this set here, okay, where Fn, Fn of x minus F of x is larger or equal than delta. Okay, and then we, we combine all these three parts somehow. So we have that. So we want to uh, we want to estimate uh, this. Okay. So we we split it in three parts. Okay. Part that we encounter at the beginning. So this unbounded domain plus A intersected minus N and then, so which is bounded set, plus the complement of Then we have that this part was uh, less or equal than epsilon over 3 by what we call star plus this part 
Okay, we are here. And uh, this is less red epsilon over 3 because of this. Plus, we have this is less than this is AC intersected minus N. N and this is can be bound by delta because we are outside this set. And so you put all these things together, you have that epsilon over 3 plus epsilon over 3 plus uh, delta. We assume that delta is less than epsilon over 6n times 2. Hmm? So this comes. This is. Ah, okay. Less. Okay, so this is by the absolute convergence of uh, of the integral. This second term here, because we are within A, and A is is a bounded domain, is a a domain with which has small measure. And these are uh, integral function. And here we are. Uh, okay, here we are out outside A, but but at least we know that the function here, this difference is is small. Okay, and then we are done. Um, well, if you start from a bounded domain, probably you don't need the first part. You just you just need these two. Okay, it's the second. Uh, you need you don't need to 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 to, to do the, the first step. Okay. Okay. Now I'd like to show you. An example of a function which is uh, which is quite um, uh, of a sequence. Uh, which converts in measure. But not almost everywhere. Okay, probably you already know this. <coughs> okay, for instance, we can work in this closed the interval zero one, and we consider we somehow we we split n the integer n with the compose n has. Uh, power of 2 plus some rest, where r is in between 2, uh, k, and 0. OK, we have that if we, if we define this sequence of function here as follows. So the characteristic function of r2 to the minus k r plus 1 minus k of x somehow you, you can you can look at it as um, okay, this is 0 1 has a train which passed through 0 1 infinitely many times and each time you reduce the size, uh, the size of, of the vacuum, okay? The size of the trains. And so what happens is that for any x, 0, 1, there are infinitely many n such that fn of x 
is equal to 1 and also infinitely many n such that fn of x is equal to 0. So there is no there is no uh, pointwise limit, okay? Okay, but what about the uh, convergence in measure? Okay, this is one fact, but we have that we can prove that the fan converts in measure to zero. Okay, so we want to estimate the set that, so for any epsilon such that, um, okay, for instance, you can, in this case, you can fix epsilon between zero and one. Hmm? There is infinity, infinity many values for n such that it can be infinitely many. Okay, but what if this, the whole set of infinitely many values of Okay, you, 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 can, you can find them, okay? Yeah, if it's strong in to zero? In measure. No. Okay. The this, the, there is no pointwise convergence, no, no pointwise point limit, point. okay? If it's strong in to one? Equal to one. Strong in to one? Equal one for all x? There are infinitely many n yeah. for that fn of x is equal to 1. At 1x or? Yeah, fix x and you move n. Uh, because what? uh, what's r? r is fixed. Uh, r is in between 0 and 2k, okay? Uh, for each f, n, uh, r so each time you, f you decompose n in this way, okay? You fix n and you compose and in this way, and you define fn of x in this, okay? And then you see, I mean, if you can think at it, I mean, uh, as, I mean, th these are the characteristic function, I think like this, okay? Like, like something that goes to pass through zero, one, and go, go to one, and then come back, and go, oh, come back. And each time, it reduce the size of, uh, of, of the interval. So it, this is just to, to have uh, the idea, then you can formalize. But this is the way, okay? It, it passed to 0, 1 infinitely many times. And this means that and each time, it reduced the size of this interval. So you cannot have pointwise convergence. But since it reduced this size, you have, point to, uh, you have the convergence in measure, okay? So this is what I'm going to, to formalize. So you have that fn minus 0 is, uh, OK, this is equal to r2 minus k. Uh, OK, this is this and uh, r plus 1, 2 minus k. Uh, um, OK, so. Sorry? Ah, um, yes, is uh, um, larger than epsilon. We want to, to prove that it converges in measure, okay? So we want to prove that this set has a small measure, basically. So now we have that the measure of this set. is equal is uh, less or equal than this 2 minus k and this as k goes to plus infinity because uh, as n goes to infinity also k goes to plus infinity and uh, so we have that so we are done okay
want to show you another um, another exam, another exercise. May I erase this part? So here you have a, fu a, a sequence of function fn. Uh, okay, we are within a set of finite measure. Okay. Okay, we have a sequence of function fn in L p. Okay, such that we have that fn converts to f, some function f, almost everywhere in E. And we know that f uh, also belongs to Lp. Okay, we also impose this extra hypothesis. that there is a constant uh, m positive such that this sequence of function is uniformly bounded in LP norm. This is for any n. OK, then what we want to prove is that for any g in LQ, so again, uh, we have this relation between the two. We have that. Yeah. Okay, so this is what we would like to prove. Okay, so first of all, maybe we should <coughs> uh, we should first answer to this question. So, do you think that under this hypothesis, F n converts to F in in L p in the L p norm or Or not? Because in that case, it would be very easy, no? So is it true that uh, 
under this hypothesis or not. No, <laughs> of course the answer is no, because otherwise it would be <laughs> too easy. And uh, you can, uh, you can, for instance, um, you can also, I mean, fix this by an example. So take p equal to 2. And we can define uh, e equal to <coughs> 0, 1. And define fn of x as, uh, as the square root of n times the characteristic function of the interval 0, uh, 1 over n. Okay, and take f equal to zero. So we have that indeed fn of x, fn converts to f, which is equal to zero almost everywhere in zero one because you fix some some x, and if n is uh, arbitrarily large, it steps over uh, the part where it is equal to square root of n. So this is true. Uh, then, so what about the norm of fn? Is this bounded? Uh, the L2 norm, this would be, uh, so this is 0, 1. And um, okay, actually we are within this set, and one over two, and this is equal to one, right? Okay, but uh, we don't have convergence. Okay, because of this, no? Because we have that this is zero one. This is just to be minus zero. <laughs> so this is what this is just okay. Oh, one over two, and so this is just one over n, and uh, uh, to the power two here. This is n, and this is equal to one. So cannot doesn't go. It's, al it's always equal to one. So cannot go to zero. Okay. So we have to prove this using other arguments. So it's zero and you don't prove it. Hmm? It's zero and you don't prove it already. No, we don't prove it. No, we prove it that this is not true by a counterexample. Now, I mean, what we want to prove is that is this, OK? If uh, under this hypothesis, blah, 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 we have this. If this would be true, this would be trivial. But this is not true, because we showed it by a counterexample that this is not true, OK? So somehow, uh, the convergence in LP is much stronger than this. OK, so we want to prove this. To prove this, we have to use um, to combine somehow the other inequality and the absolute continuity of the integral. Okay, so I recall you that so by have that for an epsilon positive there is this some delta positive such that for any uh, so for any set a contained in e which has small measure such that the measure of a is less than delta then the integral in particular we have that 
So the, the absolute values of g raised to the power q is an integrable function, so we can apply the absolute continuity of the integral to this function is less than epsilon. Okay, just for convenience, let me take 1 over q here. Okay, now comes the theorem that maybe we we forgot. The theorem of Egorov Severini. Okay, we have that. positive, there is a subset, subset, A continues in E, such that measure of A is less than delta, and we have that Fn converse to have uh, uniformly outside this set of small measure. Okay. Okay, so now we can we can estimate this difference. Then G minus S G is less or equal than Now we use this decomposition here, okay? A and E minus A. Okay, now Okay, here we use the, the other inequality. On both integrals. Okay, so this is So how can we bound this part? 
So what we know is that uh, uh, by hypothesis, we know that uh, we know this, right? So how can we infer a similar bound for f? So which theorem can we use? Which convergence theorem? Which, which somehow um, so what we know is that is a huh? Uh, the Fatou lemma, okay? Fatou is enough. So if Fn converts to F, almost everywhere are positive. Now this is less or equal. So you just need a bound, okay? You just don't need this is less or equal than the, the means. So by Fatou lemma, P and this is uniformly bounded by this. Okay. So we can continue here and say that this is uh, less or equal than uh, two times uh, um, M times epsilon because we saw that by the absolute continuity of the integral this is less than epsilon uh, plus Okay, so we have fn minus f in L infinity g. You can bound this by the, the LQ norm of g on the whole here. It's not important. Times the measure of e minus a okay but here okay this we are within a set of finite measures so this is okay this is bounded this is bounded because g is in the q and this is small y why this is small Huh? Uh, same thing here. F of F of uh, F of 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 Here. Okay. Uh, here you you can bound this by two times. Uh, so you have f n minus f in l p is less or equal than the sum of the two l p norm, right? Okay. Maybe it's <laughs> too small. Um, is it okay? Over. 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 A. Yeah. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, okay, but I if you want, here is what is important. Here you can also bound again this by the integral over e if you want. It's not enough. I here it's enough a rough bound. Okay, a is important for g. Okay, to to make this small. This you can also bound in a in a kind of rough way. Okay, but this. Okay, by Egor of Severini, we know that this is small because we know that outside this set of small measure, we have uniform convergence, okay? So this is, uh, uh, if you take n sufficiently large, this is would be 2m times epsilon plus some epsilon. Okay, so you have, this is fixed, the measure of v minus a 
times 1 over p. This is finite because E is finite, it's a finite measure. So if you choose epsilon sufficient, sufficiently small, you can make this uh, quantity, this sum, as, uh, as small as you want, okay, as you wish. Okay, so. So maybe you can do just a le another uh, exercise. Uh, so very about absolute continuity. Just to conclude. Okay, so we have E and E interval. And we consider a function which is defined over I with values in R be uh, a monotone um, okay, assume increasing, okay, but uh, you can just to fix the, the idea, but it's the same if, you, if it's u is, uh, is decreasing, okay? Uh, and let uh, for instance, i is equal to a v. Uh, or rather, maybe is a v is contained in i. To be sure. Okay, then we have this equivalence. Then U is in a C of a B uh, if and only if we have that the integral of the absolute values of the of the, the first derivative of u prime is equal to up minus ua. Okay, so since uh, we are assuming that is monotone increasing, we can probably we can get rid of uh, these absolute values. Okay, of course the interesting part is that to prove that if it is true then u is in AC because the, the other way is it comes uh, directly from uh, the fundamental theorem of calculus for AC function, okay? So uh, this side, so if you start, if u is in AC, then it's, uh, it's trivial, okay? We, we, we use, uh, we know that the function in AC is, can be expressed as the indefinite integral of uh, Okay, this is uh, trivial. Okay, so let's prove uh, the other side. Um, okay. Okay, here the V is somehow something that we already know. So. We, we want to, to write u as the sum of two uh, functions in AC. Okay, to do this, we define this function wx as the integral between a and x of u prime t in dt. Uh, Okay, so we know that by the Lebesgue theorem that u prime is integrable, so w is in AC, okay? Ok, 
Okay, now we want to uh, to use to see something more about this function. So, take for instance y larger than x, and we want to evaluate w y minus w of x. This is what, by definition, this is the integral between x and y of u prime dt in dt. And okay, now we can, about u, we just know that it is a monotone increasing, but we can use the Lebesgue lemma, okay, the Lebesgue theorem. Lebesgue theorem, and it tells us that this is less or equal than u y minus uh, ux. Okay. So if we we have that, what we get is that u x minus w x. This is a particular function. Is less than u y minus w y. So it's increasing. Okay. Okay, it's increasing, but at the same time we have that if we evaluate on the endpoints A and B, so at some point we have to use this, okay? Of course. So just evaluate this function at the endpoints. This is by hypothesis. Uh, this is equal to u b minus u a. So at the end, what you get is that w b minus u b is equal to uh, w a minus u a. So it's increasing, but it's at the same point, has the same value, so it must be constant. Okay. Okay, so we are done. A of course, a constant function is in AC, right? Function. So. So at the end, what we prove is that u of x can be u has w of x plus u of x minus w of x. This is in AC because it was just defined as the indefinite integral of uh, an integrable function. And this is in, uh, in AC. Actually, this is more than AC, it's constant, but in particular, it is in AC. So the full function is in AC. So we are done. Okay. So well, we can stop here. <laughs>